get the truck. Kelsey, that's the morning alarm coming from Ambassador. Go ahead and close the window, take up the door, and uh, turn the AC off. Southgate Pork and Apple. We have an ammonia alarm going off at Ambassador. We sheltered in place. Kevin, you hear that? That's our neighbor's ammonia alarm. Shut the door quick. I'll call Port Control. Port Control. Hi, this is the co op building. We can hear our neighbor's alarm going off. If you were to be at Port Canaveral and observe what you believe to be a hazardous materials incident, we would ask that you see to your own safety first, the safety of others, and notify first responders right away by calling 911. After a 911 call is made, Port Canaveral will dispatch fire and police response to handle the incident. The Department of Environmental Protection would be notified after you contact 911. They would then notify the state watch office and I would respond if appropriate. So once I'm on site, I would represent the state as the state on-scene coordinator to ensure that the state of Florida is satisfied with the response and cleanup of the environment after the initial emergency is mitigated. Other agencies that we'll work with in incident command include first responders, the fire department, police department, and our federal partners, the U.S. Coast Guard. Coast Guard's role in an incident such as this, we would be the federal on-scene coordinator in regards to the National Contingency Plan. We would establish the incident command system. Coast Guard also works with the state agencies as well as uh, the EPA, uh, local law enforcement as well, and, and also the, re the responsible party if there is one. Um, they would all have roles in the, in the incident command structure. There are plans that are in place that help all these agencies uh, to work together, make sure that people know the proper role, uh, make sure that people are doing what they need to be doing to mitigate these types of incidences from occurring.